Okay, let's start. Welcome to all. I'm uh, Domenico Vito. I'm uh, coordinating the Climate Social Forum. The Climate Social Forum is a virtual agora that addressing the, uh, this is addressing the topics of climate and social related crises. Uh, the scope of the Agora is to connect uh, expert activists uh, and uh, uh, interested people all over the world to deal with the climate and social crisis. And today we are on the venue of the Open Dialogue on Climate Change. Open Dialogue on Climate Change are promoted by the Open Dialogue Foundation. And uh, the foundation is fostering uh, communities, youth groups and activists to organize sessions that are dealing uh, the, uh, the problem of climate crisis. Uh, we participated to this construction with the Climate Social Forum. And uh, today we are here in this event that uh, um, wants to relate climate and social related, uh, climate and social effect. Um, the, the goal is to have an open discussion and to uh, come into solution and resolution. Um, I was mentioning uh, at the beginning that uh, um, we will deal with three particular uh, areas these days that are like uh, um, one is the climate and peace, that is, of course, uh, like one of the uh, most prominent topics uh, in, in this moment uh, climate and migration and loss and damage. So, uh, I think that uh, we can start with the, the, the panel of the, of the speakers. We have amazing speakers today with us. And uh, uh, I will start with the, the topic of uh, climate and peace. Today, I'm particularly uh, emotional and honored to, to have a, a special guest with us. Um, in this moment in which, uh, as I said before, peace is one of the global problems that is affecting also climate change. Uh, we have a, a, a guest that um, has experienced the, the lack of peace, the problem of war, properly in these days. So I'm really honored and uh, uh, I really thank also for her presence, uh, Irina Yarmolenko, for being here with us. Uh, Irina Yarmolenko is a um, uh, founder of the um, Center for Social Communication, an Ukrainian NGO uh, that uh, is dealing with the climate action, gender empowerment. And also she is the uh, initiator of uh, uh, a great initiative that um, demonstrates how it's possible to be resilient. That is the Irpin Reconstruction Summit. I will give um, the floor to her, not spending no more words. And uh, Irina, the floor is yours. And uh, really thanks for being with us. Domenico and uh, colleagues, uh, thank you for having me today. Invitation. It's uh, uh, it's very important to the, for opportunity to talk uh, to explain uh, in real our situation. I, I need to understand how many minutes I have that uh, because uh, the topic is uh, really wise and experience is uh, really big. So I need to make it short, but let me know how much minutes I do have. You can take uh, from five to 10 minutes. Okay, great. Uh, let uh, me start uh, from the small beginning when 21st of uh, February, uh, 5 a.m. Uh, it was uh, ruined my, my life uh, totally. It, when it was ruined my life of Ukrainian people uh, we never expected that uh, something worse than quarantine uh, and the COVID-19 can happen. But believe me, war and the um, constituencies for each family, uh, it is uh, very harmful. So if it's harmful for person, for each of the family, we can just collect how many pain and uh, how many constituencies it is uh, for our territories, for our cities, for our country, for each of us. So uh, the rocket sound uh, and uh, it was uh, like first 
what I heard that day. And uh, it was absolutely, absolutely emotional and very scary moment. Putin has reigned uh, most peaceful ever time, ever time in Europe. We can't believe that it's possible 21st century uh, war in the in the middle somewhere in the middle of the Europe. But right now we are on this process, and uh, already five parts of Ukraine under the under the fights, under the rockets, uh, under the blood, a lot of blood from both sides, and a lot of destroyed cities, destroyed districts, destroyed our beautiful lands, green lands, and our uh, and pollution from, for every day, they send around 20 ro rockets and destroy and burn our normal life and uh, normal life of our cities. It has influence not just for each of the family, but it also has influence for our uh, goals, which we used to have to fight with the climate issues. I won't let you know that we stand and we fight with that in different ways. Of course, you know that we hardly fight and ask solidarity and our soldiers fight, but each of us are soldier in different area. And I find myself after a few frustrated weeks for my family and me that I wanna be useful for my country, for my cities, and for my planet. And thanks to Domenico, who been in touch and who give uh, as well psychological first time support. And uh, after we decided to make small things with humanitarian support, he was supportive. And then we find that we wanna make something bigger. And we, together with other experts and to get under the patronage of the city, we established official working group for reconstruction of our cities. And now we are in, uh, in the level when we can say that we want to be uh, a pilot project for other cities for reconstruction, which are also in under the, under the attacks. Irpin, uh, the city which I present right now, five kilometers from Kiev, population 100, uh, in, in 100,000 inhabitants. Before the war, already 75% of people come, were coming back. But also, you know, probably from the media that Bucha and Irpin, Hostomel and a few other cities, uh, they, they were, some of them were occupied. Irpin was occupied for 30% by, uh, by, by Russia army. And um, in Irpin, uh, there were, uh, as a result, there were 76% destroyed infrastructure. And it is a big percent of, uh, of lost. So thanks, we, uh, we were successful with, evacu uh, with evacuation for people. Uh, but uh, right now, you know, it is um, a time to think about uh, how we can back people uh, to their homes and how we can support our uh, support development of our city and how we can also help with that cities which are uh, right now under fights, under fires and uh, in the eastern part of Ukraine. I just uh, want to let you know that we uh, even been under the war process because uh, today it was also a lot of bad news about war, what is going on there. We every day think how to make our city uh, better and how also remember about lead protocols about green issues sustainable de de development goals and about strategies of the city 
we uh, about preparation process we also always mention about this uh, and why i'm talking like this uh, because uh, it is a symbol it is a symbol that no one can stop our way to first to to, to protect our dignity and to protect our no one can take from us the values european values and we with this project we show we show that putin wouldn't uh, ruin our cities at all and um, cities it is alive people where who we are here but you know that they very close to different uh, nuclear plants they one of them it is uh, caged by them and uh, they collect weapons uh, near nuclear plant and it's mean that it is a uh, very dangerous that can be destroyed you know that chernobyl uh, nuclear plant it was uh, one of the achieved achieved stone milestone by them uh, at the beginning of the war they occupy chernobyl uh, nuclear plant and they uh, even uh, uh, put their troops in the red forest which are very famous uh, with radiation forest and uh, there were a lot of uh, news in belarus media about about nuclear about health issue russia soldiers who um, took part in the uh, military part in that part also uh, when they leave chernobyl uh, plant they took some uh, uh, they took some issue, some items from the plant and it was also somehow strange uh, strange uh, so it's 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 always it's always touched our green uh, topics and war is uh, always uh, is always uh, make worse things than it was previous because against we have also you you know in uh, now in Ukraine there is a lot of uh, rubble uh, in the cities I mean destroyed houses and uh, some of smart decisions should be. Uh, uh, done by different institutions and UNDP, for example, um, explore European uh, like uh, as, uh, to try to recycle rubble and uh, that we find a way how to make from this rubble as infrastructure items. So even with a very, very harmful and emotional uh, tragedy with uh, so many lost and uh, died our people, we still continue to think about our planet and uh, we ask for solidarity, also yours. And we continue to believe about, we will continue to believe about importance to save our planet as well as the climate. Domenico? Thank you. Thank you very much, Irina, for uh your witness and also your words that I think it's uh, they are like very important and central to to like center the topic that you want to address it is climate and peace and how this is important for climate and how without peace climate is in danger uh, before giving the floor to the next speaker of today uh, I want to mention that, for example, uh, we assessed the, in, in the last uh, intermediate negotiation on climate that due to the war, there was like a, a very uh, uh, slowing and delay in, uh, in the commitment, uh, like declaration of the states. Actually, in a way, war impacted also on, uh, on uh, like the, the commitments of the Paris agreements. And this is something that we, we have to consider and studies are starting to uh, assess the impact also of, uh, on the environment of the world. Uh, but talking about that, I will give the floor to uh, Francesco Postiglione. Francesco Postiglione is a, um, a philosopher and uh, he is like uh, studying also the, the, the conflict on a geopolitical point of view and how, for example, it's important to have uh, 
strong international institution to avoid such kind of conflict or situations. Uh, I'll give the floor then to Francesco to, to make uh, his points and thank you for being with us, Francesco. Thank you, Domenico, and hi to everyone. Uh, do you listen to me, all right? Yes, okay. First of all, I want to thank Irina for, the witness, for her witness too, and uh, thank her for her courage, for the courage of uh, all the Ukrainian people. I listened very, very carefully what uh, Irina said, and I only want, want to say one thing that, uh, I think every Italian citizen since February, uh, since the last February, uh, is thinking uh, to Ukrainian people. This I can I can say with uh, with the very very sure conviction. And I don't know if it's useful to you Ukrainian people, but I can say that every Italian people is thinking about you because uh, we always felt that Ukraine is Europe and um, history says that and I don't want to uh, <laughs> I don't want to go in this theme because we uh, we all know that okay I I will try to go to my theme Domenico says that uh, um, I will I am a philosopher it's not right Precisely, precisely uh, so, because I don't think that uh, one can define himself a philosopher. I can say that I study philosophy and I, I'm studying um, political philosophy since 20 years. And my particular aim was uh, uh, the question of, of war. And uh, mm, it's not only that war has a climate impact, as Domenico say, said, but war has an impact to the migration. Um, and migration has an impact to climate. So uh, there are some themes that are always very tied together. Uh, the solution I will talk ab about the problem of war will be a solution, could be a solution, always, or, sorry, uh, could be a solution also for climate uh, uh, change and climate uh, uh, problem. But for, before talking about the solution, I want, I want to focus the problem. Uh, why we have war and why we have wars in the uh, 21st century? Because as Irina said, uh, it's very, very strange and uh, uh, unacceptable that we have wars in the uh, 21st century. Uh, war is something that uh, uh, has to be uh, of the past, not of the present and, and, and the future. But why we have wars until now? I think that uh, we, can, we can say that uh, we have wars for uh, four reasons, principally. We have wars because we don't have a, a democratic international order. This is the principal reason, and I will, uh, I will, I will go uh, focusing to this reason after. The second reason that is that we uh, we don't have demo democratic states until now. Until uh, uh, we are we are in the twenty uh, first century, uh, about uh, one hundred states in the world, it's about uh, the half of the states in the world are not democratic in uh, any way, in any way we can say that. For example, this is the reason because we have wars in uh, some um, states of Africa because uh, uh, they are not democratic states. So uh, some of their orders uh, will go on by uh, military force. So uh, it's uh, quite obvious that military force uh, takes uh, itself together with, uh, with war. OK, the third reason for what we have wars, according to me, is that some nation wants, want to, want to end, uh, uh, is searching for a state identity. For example, this is the reason uh, for wars uh, in Palestine between Palestine and Israel, because there, uh, there is one state that uh, is searching for an identity. 
or uh, this is the a reason for wars uh, uh, also in Africa. And the fourth reason, according to me, the most important one is that uh, uh, we have wars because there are conflicts in order to control uh, resources, just like coal or just like coke or just like diamonds. And maybe in the future, we can have wars to control resources just like water, while water uh, is not available, for example, in Africa. Uh, this for reason is the reason for what we uh, had wars recently in uh, uh, some areas of the world, uh, like Bosnia, Serbia, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, wars uh, uh, conducted by democratic states, we can say, because, for example, the war in uh, Serbia and Bosnia was conducted by NATO, which is an, an alliance of uh, uh, democratic states uh, uh, against one non-democratic state, just like Serbia. So, uh, according to me, we have wars for, uh, principally for reason two and reason four. So we have wars because we have non-democratic states and sometimes these non-democratic states are in conflict with uh, uh, even democratic states for the control of some resources or maybe some geopolitical strategic uh, sites, just like, uh, uh, Middle East or uh, or something like that. Okay. In every case, I think that uh, uh, there'll be a solution for war in a, in every one of the four cases that uh, I uh, showed before. But uh, uh, this solution is not one of my ideas. Obviously, uh, this is an idea uh, that uh, is very very uh, fixed in the past because it's an idea of uh, Immanuel Kant. It was a philosopher uh, in the uh, 18th century, in the uh, end of the 18th century. And uh, Immanuel Kant was born and lived all his life, not so much far from Ukraine, uh, in Konigsberg. And uh, uh, he had an idea in uh, uh, 1795. He had an idea that uh, if we have a uh, democratic international order, a democratic international uh, assembly of uh, democratic states in which every state is a democratic state, we can have peace. Uh, he, um, he called, uh, he, he talked about perpetual peace. We can have perpetual peace because if every state is dem democratic and if the rules to solve conflicts are uh, democratic rules, just like the one that we can see in every parliament, uh, we would not have war in the, in the end because every conflict will be solved during the discussion in this international democratic parliament. But uh, the, um, uh, the condition sine qua non is that uh, every state is democratic, because uh, if every state is democratic, we can say that in that assembly, every, uh, every political leader is representative, representative of uh, his people. If uh, we don't have democratic states, um, Political leaders are not representative of their people, of the willing of their people, but they are representative only of himself. This was an idea of Kant just very, very before uh, uh, World War I, World War II, and very, very before, all, only, uh, all, uh, before also uh, Vienna Congress and so on. But uh, I think that uh, you uh, have just seen some similarity to uh, ONU, to UN organization. And in, in, the, in fact, uh, the, the idea, the dream of, of Kant uh, was, um, uh, was uh, um, the, 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 the basis to give the idea of uh, uh, UN Congress in 1947. But the actual uh, UN organization is not uh, um, 
similar to the idea of Kant for two uh, problems. One of one of these problem is uh, is uh, is quite simple to to see that every uh, state in this world and every state that has part in the UN assembly is not democratic. Just uh, like I said before, the second problem is uh, according to me the principal problem. The second problem is that ONU or UN is uh, has not uh, democratic rules to decide. Uh, you can see that uh, actually uh, nowadays um, ONU has a, a configuration just like uh, a state. We have uh, the executive power that is uh, the Congress. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the Security Council. I'm sorry. We have the legislative power. It is the uh, UN Assembly in which it's true that every state counts one for one. In fact, if you see, if you see, for me, this is an important, important fact. If you see every resolution of the UN Assembly, you can almost say that uh, uh, we uh, could live in a quite uh, um, uh, right world because uh, the resolutions of UN Assembly are often very, very uh, focused to solve the problems. But the fact is that the resolution of the assembly are not man mandate for the states because uh, the real power in uh, a UN uh, organization, as you all know, is uh, the Security Council. Security Council has two problems. Uh, in order to the democratic rules. First of all, uh, it's made of only uh, 15 members of which six are permanent members. Sorry, five are permanent members. And uh, you can, you can uh, obviously see that this is not democratic. In democracy, there's no possibility that uh, one has a permanent role in the, in the decision. The second problem is, uh, as you all know, uh, again, is that uh, um, the five permanent members has the right uh, of vetoes, uh, the right of say no to every dec decision of the other four states or the other 14 states. Well, who has the, uh, the vetoes uh, right? Who has the right of say no in the Security Council? As you know, is uh, uh, Great Britain, France, uh, Russia, uh, USA, and China, who were the uh, winners of the Second World War. Well, if you see who are the first principal um, weapons pr producers in the world, you can see that uh, the in the in the first 10 producers of of, of uh, weapons we have usa china russia france and even germany and even italy uh, but uh, i'm saying so that uh, um, if we have a security council in which uh, almost all of the states whereas the vetoes right are the first producers in the world of weapons you can uh, understand that we will never have peace because war for, for these countries is an affair. So, and I'm going to, to finish my interview. Um, what is the real solution as Kant was dreaming and as uh, uh, other philosophers like Kelsen, like Michael Walzer nowadays as uh, a said, the solution is that First of all, uh, uh, the UN organization uh, has to be representative of every area of the world. Uh, in the Security Council, uh, there, uh, there has to be uh, some country from Africa, some country from South America, some country from uh, uh, South Asia. Um, and uh, there's no sense that in the Security Council uh, uh, we have France and uh, Great Britain, but uh, uh, it makes sense that nowadays in the Security Council we will have Europe expressing just like one country. 
and so this is the first reform. The second and most important reform is a reform of the rules. We uh, we we need to have uh, an assembly who can decide and a security council without the right of say no of one country to the others and uh, uh, we, have, we we need to have a security council who decide with majority uh, just like uh, in the every democratic decision i think that uh, if we add in the past these two simply rules a lot of decision uh, against fairness that uh, uh, the Security Council has made in the in the recent past were not the decision that uh, would have taken. Uh, let's see, for example, uh, the decision to uh, to attack Afghanistan or Iraq and so on. And just to, to talk about the present, it's obvious that uh, UN uh, is not expressing. Uh, one single resolution against the invasion of Russia to Ukraine. Why? Because Russia is one of the of the countries of the Security Council. So Russia uh, has exercised exercised the, the his right veto to say no to every decision of the UN Congress, and that's the reason why Ukraine until now uh, is trying to defend. Uh, uh, her country uh, alone, alone, because we know that if other countries goes to defend the, to defend Ukraine, there will be a war just like uh, larger than uh, than now, because there will no, uh, there is no possibility of a military intervention of UN in Ukraine because Russia is exercising as uh, right leaders. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to conclude and say that uh, this is, a, as I said, a long time idea. Two, um, two centuries and it's, the, it's now the moment to talk about this idea and to um, uh, show this idea to every uh, session, to every talk, to every uh, virtual platform, just like this one, because um, according to me, it's the only solution for not having wars in the future. Um, we, has just made, we have just made a lot of steps for peace, because if you think about the world in 1945, and if you think about the world now, we can say that we we have had some steps in order to go into peace, but without the reform of UN rules, we will never have peace completely, because UN is not a representative uh, organization of the people of the different areas of the world. I would like to say so much more, Domenico, but uh, I can't because I know that I have my time. And so uh, if, if it's po there's possibility to answer to some questions, I will, be, I will do later. Thank you. Thank you, Francesco. I think that will be also the possibility to interact with the participant in the second part of the session. Uh, now I'll give the floor to the other speaker of today. We were talking about wars that are in different parts of the world. We are experiencing now in uh, uh, in Europe, but also in, in Africa, in, in also in other countries there are wars. And uh, I want to uh, give the floor to uh, Charles C. Balugon of ONG Africa Esperance uh, to like uh, report he, uh, his experience also in this field. So Charles, the floor is to you. Charles, I don't know if you are there. Hello? Yeah, and what do you call it? I can go in French, you can resume. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me go in English. If you if you can try in English, is better. But uh... okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you for the opportunity you gave me to to speak about your your innovation and the launch of this uh, these opportunities. I mean, uh, this is the best occasion to share our view with uh, the partners. I want to, to congratulate all of them. Et le reste, tu vas résumer. Laisse-moi aller parce que <laughs> ma tête est tellement prise à beaucoup de choses. Tu vas essayer de résumer. Je vais parler. Tu vas résumer, s'il te plaît. C'est bon? Très bien. Très bien, d'accord. Donc, euh, et une, une fois encore de plus, Vinto, félicitations à toi pour tes engagements. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui, aujourd'hui, je ne veux pas me tromper, tu es l'une des personnalités, et là, ce n'est pas des fleurs que je te jette, tu es l'une des personnalités sur, sur lesquelles, en tout cas, en tout ce qui concerne les débats autour de SDGs, tu es une personnalité aujourd'hui avec qui on ne peut pas ne pas faire. Et donc, je pense que cette nouvelle innovation que tu es en train d'apporter, elle est la bienvenue parce que et tout ce qu'il y a de bon qui peut apporter un plus, qui peut aider toutes les initiatives dans le monde à aller, parce que nous sommes pratiquement à mi-chemin de l'atteinte des OBDP 2030. Donc, toutes les innovations, tout ce qui a de qualité comme innovation à apporter, sont des choses sérieuses sur lesquelles nous allons travailler. Et donc, comme tu le sais, et toi et moi, toutes les initiatives que nous avons eu à mener, tout ça, c'est pour aller dans le sens de l'atteinte des OBDP. Et donc, je voudrais apprécier cette innovation que tu apportes. Et, et tu sais, mon soutien, il n'est il pas négociable. Nous sommes avec toi. Nous sommes avec toutes les initiatives que tu mènes et avec tous les autres que nous t'encourageons. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Uh, yeah. So, Charles, Charles uh, introduced that the, um, like he was happy to participate to the session. And uh, uh, of course, um, it's, it's open also to, uh, to every initiative that is dealing with SDGs and also on such initiative that also the ones that uh, has been expressed in uh, in uh, in the previous uh, intervention uh, so it's important to foster such kind of innovation and charles in his talk expresses properly uh, the the welcoming of uh, of these uh, innovation that uh, are very important also to, to address the SDGs. so charles i don't know if you want to add other things non, 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 thank you, thank you. Okay. Je suis, au, fur, au fur et à mesure, s'il y a quelque chose à dire, je vais intervenir. Ok, ok. So, uh, before giving the floor to the other speaker and uh, change the moderation, because I will give the moderation to my colleague Paulino Witti, I want to welcome also Paul Lodri Dongmo, uh, that is from the team of Open Dialogue on Climate Change, to a welcoming remark. So, Paul, the floor is yours for a welcoming remark. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Domenico, to give me the floor. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here to be insightful uh, and uh, informative dialogues. So I'm Paul Lodri Dogmo from the Open Dialogue International Foundation. I'm in charge of the coordinating of the countries member of this foundation. So we, we, we are all aware on climate-related uh, issues and impact in within our society. So uh, this dialogue is an opportunity for us to share our experiences and uh, to to gather to gather our our strength in the frame in the frame of climate change fight fight fight. So uh, I'm very happy to be here on the behalf of the International Foundation on open dialogue on climate change. So uh, I, I just want to Wish to wish you a good dialogue and uh, with a great outcomes. Outcomes seeing that climate has also an impact in the mobility of people all around the world, especially in Africa. In Africa, the, the past crisis that uh, they are facing loss and damage, loss and damage. So I'm very excited to read from you with your outcomes also, and I'm here. To contribute also and to represent by the International Foundation. Too. So, thank you very much, Domenico, for giving me the floor. And I wish you all the best and, and good luck for this uh, insightful dialogue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. 
And now I'll give the floor to my colleague, Pauline Owiti, to introduce the uh, other speakers of this session. Pauline, to you. Thank you very much, uh, Domenico and Paul. Um, I just wanted to stress the need of um, what is actually the relationship between climate and social related effects like war like what is already happening in most places and we were hit before in places like uh somewhere like global south you find a place like kenya where i come from people were already fighting for natural resources and it cost war natural resources such as like water which you can't believe people would fight over and also natural resources such as grazing land so uh, that's an issue that is already happening in places such as Africa and it's a good uh, uh, it's a good platform here that we are trying to deliberate on these things and find solutions and how we could find also uh, better resolutions to um, these particular issues so our next speaker is Ismail Joel Eboa so Ismail is the Secretary General of the Africa Network of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Sustainable Development, which is actually a Pan-African network working across most African countries and they are committed to climate justice and biodiversity conservation as well as restoration in order to ensure that um, the continent natural resources are sustainably managed to bring about positive ecological and socio-economic transformation within uh, the local communities that this organization is working on. So welcome, Ismail. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pauline. Thank you to all the participants. Thank you, Domenico, for uh, giving me uh, the opportunity to speak uh, also again. Uh, thank you to Francesco, and thank you also to uh, Elena for their uh, previous, for their uh, uh, for for their speech, for what they have presented. Yes, uh, we are uh, African Network of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Development. And I think as um, all Africans are uh, concerned uh, by uh, the problem of uh, peace and climate and uh, the ongoing situation um, in Ukraine. And uh, we are working uh, particularly yes, on uh, this area. And um, uh, this, uh, what I'm going to say uh, will be linked both uh, with um, uh, environment, I'm going to touch environmental uh, uh, aspects and also uh, uh, governance aspects uh, to try to, uh, uh, to, to present the situation and maybe also uh, find a way out of uh, what is ongoing. So, um, Yes, as you may all know, uh, Africa, Africa, the continent Africa uh, uh, undergoes um, various kinds of crises. And uh, even Cameroon, where I am now currently, has a lot of crises. So uh, there, are very, uh, there are many reasons of those crises. So uh, we, we can have uh, the, the way uh, some problems are managed by our leaders, uh, we can also have um, the problem of uh, environment, meaning that the way uh, we, we interact with nature, and uh, those all these are uh, can be put together to explain the the crisis that we have. And um, yes, um, what is happening yes uh, in Ukraine is uh, really concerning since uh, lives are at stake. And we have um, young people, we have children that cannot uh, go to school. We have also uh, women that cannot have um, a good uh, healthcare system. We, we, can, we, we have, also, we have uh, many consequences of what is happening there. And this is really uh, concerning. And um, the situation is uh, really complex in Ukraine. And, uh, as in many countries uh, that uh, undergo uh, war. And um, the, 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 particularity, the particularity in Ukraine is um, the fact that we have many members of the Security Council of UN that are involved directly or indirectly in that crisis. Uh, it's just like, um, it gives, I, I mean, um, it does not give a very good example. I should say to many uh, countries. 
and um, it, the, 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 the problem of the war in Ukraine has become too much complex. And um, the more the war is ongoing, the more we have a, a lot of impacts. Yes, impacts of our um, human life and also uh, impacts of uh, the vegetation, the air that we breathe, impacts over uh, even the waters. We have various kinds of impact uh, due to what is ongoing uh, in Ukraine. And um, also the fact, as I said, that uh, many uh, countries that are member of uh, UN security are involved. And um, it is something that um, I think many countries have, have tried to solve this, um, this problem. We have had um, a lot of uh, diplomacy um, trying to solve this, but uh, to no avail. That is what we are just um, noticing. And, uh, Yes, uh, Russia uh, is in its position. And we have also uh, countries from NATO that are also uh, in their position. So uh, this situation, um, I think that uh, to stop this situation, we should normally uh, reflect on uh, uh, innovative ways to go out. Yes, maybe uh, also uh, trying to reflect on uh, uh, how to reform maybe also UN or how to reform also international relations because uh, this is an example of a war that is uh, ongoing in a continent, I, sh I should say Europe, that um, I, I think that uh, for too many long, I did not uh, experience a war, but now it is ongoing there. And um, uh, it is really concerning. And um, yes, people asked what about Africa? What is the position of Africa? So some countries said that um, Africa does not, um, the continent Africa does not uh, give its position um, because many other countries uh, give their position. And uh, yes, um, I, I, uh, through my intervention, I'll try maybe to uh, explain maybe uh, why, because you know, uh, all what is, uh, uh, all what that concern international relation is about your interest. And even the war, when there is a war somewhere, there is the, the problem, the main problem, yes, is a problem of resources. And when we are talking about resources, we are talking about environment, we are talking about uh, the way, yes, uh, in the, the, the nature is governed. And um, the more we don't have uh, a good manner to, to manage our environment, to manage also the resources that we have, and uh, it can lead, yes, to war, it can lead also uh, to migration and all these things. And uh, yes, if we try maybe to understand, yes, the root causes of uh, that conflict of if Ukraine, you are going to see that it is linked also uh, to uh, the scarcity of resources, maybe. It is also linked to uh, uh, the, the, the fact that maybe Russia would like to uh, uh, impose uh, its dominion, yes. And there are many reasons that can explain that, but they are all linked to environment and they can lead to what we are just observing now uh, um, in uh, Ukraine, that war that is ongoing. But we should also say that um, we have a serious problem that we have not very well addressed, I should say for long, because uh, we have the problem of uh, nuclear weapon. We have uh, also uh, the armament system. And um, yes, this was one of the reasons of uh, the World War I and II. And um, we, what we notice, as just uh, Francesco said, is that uh, many countries that are belong or member of the UN Security Council, they are the main producer of weapons. And also they are the, the main producer of the nuclear. So this capacity, if this is not really treated, I think that we are going to have this kind of experience of this situation where one country or many country, because they have that power, they can uh, like to uh, uh, overpower on other nation. Um, yes, that is what uh, we observe. So, uh, so we can just ask ourselves, what is peace? Is it um, absence of uh, conflicts? Or uh, can we say that uh, we are promoter of peace if uh, we, uh, if we promote uh, the nuclearization, or uh, if we promote the uh, the industry of uh, armament, so those are all the questions that we can ask. 
and uh, yes, this question I also uh, ask, would like also to ask that to all the countries that are involved, also all the countries that are in the UN Security Council, because uh, this is really concerning. And uh, when we talk also about uh, the nuclear weapon, we talk also about uh, the environment. We know all the huge impact that it can have, yes, on our biodiversity and also uh, the future of our of uh, the human being and also the future of many generations. We have seen the war in, uh, uh, in, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We have seen many state intervention in other countries, what they resulted to. And we have seen many, many, many problems. So uh, this problem of uh, nuclear, um, the, the nuclear also must be addressed. I think that we have to address it if we would like to have a peace world. And now, um, what are kind of solution? I should say that, um, yes, yes. Now, regarding what is happening in uh, Ukraine, I think, uh, yes, the Ukrainian, they need uh, help. They need um, help uh, assistance, yes, uh, of UN and also uh, many other countries that can do. But we should also know that uh, what is uh, happening also in Ukraine affects us all. It affects Africa since also uh, the fact that we cannot um, have access uh, easy or the cost of we have um, the cost of uh, many products have increased in Africa. And um, yes, the, the World Bank and also uh, the African Development Bank have uh, demonstrated that um, and also uh, the African Union that if that, got, that war is not stopped, it will have a serious, serious impacts in Africa. That is already a continent uh, with, a, with more, a lot of problems. So uh, we, we should see, I think that uh, you, the UN should normally take, um, uh, should normally increase uh, its leadership role. And um, also this investment in nuclear reform is really important because as I said, if we don't uh, promote the disinvestment in nuclear weapon, weapon and investment in sustainable development goals, meaning that in environment, we will not have this and uh, even the uh, agenda 2030, that is uh, the, the framework of the United Nations may not be uh, rich. So this is uh, something that we must address the question of the nuclear, the question of uh, uh, militarization, the fact that some countries, instead of uh, uh, putting, investing in the UN for, to enable that uh, economies of uh, many countries be uh, improved, they prefer to invest in armament. They prefer to invest in armament. They are so-called, yes, uh, countries uh, that are members of uh, the UN Security Council. But the way that uh, we see, we ask ourselves whether it is really peace. So uh, this is really concerning. It is really concerning. And uh, many things I think uh, should be uh, reframed or reorganized if we really want to reach the sustainable development goal. And we ask ourselves, are we really willing to, um, to have a peaceful world? Or are we just in the UN because uh, we, we believe and we have the conviction that because we belong uh, to the UN, we are there to improve people's lives or we are just there uh, to be there. And just, uh, yes. So I think these are the questions that um, we, we can ask regarding to what is happening in uh, Ukraine. And I would like also uh, to mention a solution. And I would like also uh, to talk about the, uh, the, the place of uh, Africa in the UN Security Council. Francesco has talked about it, but I think that this is really concerning. Yes, we cannot have in the UN Security Council uh, all the continents represented. We have America represented, though not all the countries. At least we can have one country that is represent uh, that represent its continent in the UN. So, but Africa is not represented in the UN Security Council. So, how uh, would we like that uh, Africa uh, say something that would be consistent? Uh, regarding what is happening uh, in Ukraine. Whereas, yes, the country, the continent is already undergoing uh, various crises, but also uh, it is just like uh, Africa was put aside. I think that uh, there should be a lot of improvement that uh, uh, should be done in the UN for UN really to be uh, inclusive because we are talking about inclusivity. We are talking also uh, about uh, the taking to account yes, uh, the various angles. Uh, if we put aside, maybe uh, unwittingly, because uh, maybe uh, the framework of the UN uh, uh, dates 
from, I think, uh, 1940. I think that it is time to change it. And uh, this will also uh, be uh, an advantage for Africa also to have uh, its word and uh, its says on what is happening, this uh, war of Ukraine, and maybe also and prevent also uh, 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 some war that uh, may happen. Uh, if we don't try to, uh, if, if we don't really reflect on these key points that I have raised, I think, uh, um, it, 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 we cannot have yes, a peaceful world. So we should think about inclusivity. We should also think about prevention. And uh, we should also uh, think about the disinvestment uh, from nuclear weapon and demilitarization and investment in sustainable development goals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Joel. Uh, we have actually talked about resolutions, those that target the UN. We have also talked about the imbalance within the UN, being that most voices don't matter within uh, the UN itself. And what we really need to do, what they really need to do uh, for these voices to be heard, for the imbalances to work. But what do we feel about the immediate solutions we can take? Because to some extent, we can't wait for uh, people to lead. So what are we doing when it comes to uh, resolving the war around us with the victims? What are we doing in terms of the climate issues that really brings the war in our communities? I think that is something we should try to um, have a little bit discussion about it. Uh, we had our next speaker, Ineza from Loss and Damage. Youth Coalition. Apparently her network is not stable and she was struggling to join. I don't know if she has joined already. Yeah, she joined, but I think that uh, she she lost connection. Maybe in the meanwhile that uh, she's joining, yeah, we can uh, uh, share um, a, a video of Gamenos Mastroieni that is connecting migration, peace, and sustainable development. This is like uh, uh, something that uh, is on the like uh, resources of the of the Climate Social Forum. So in the meanwhile that she's uh, connecting, we can run this uh, small video uh, and uh, that is uh, focusing on migration and the climate. So let me share the screen for a moment. This is a really great conclusion. I thank you very much for your introduction today and it opens very much the, the virus conversation. So thank you again. Nice. Um, and we can move then to Gramenos. Uh, so, Gramenos, we were very honored for him to be uh, opening the Climate Social Forum. So, Gramenos, before you begin, I think maybe you want to give one sentence of your role for those who weren't able to um, watch the opening uh, ceremony. And yes, please proceed with your presentation. He's going to focus especially on climate and migration. So, thank you again for being with us today, Gramenos. Thank you. I hope you can hear me well. Good afternoon, my friends. I'm not sure you can see your, your screen because... We... Yes, we can. It's just very zoomed in, so I advise okay, you to click on... So, all right. There you go. Thank you. Let me hear you very well. Fantastic. So, uh, as Paula said, we are getting into a terrible period, but also a marvelous one. Because finally we're understanding that things that we thought were very far apart are actually very much connected. That there is no uh, environmental balance without social balance, that justice is protective to the environment and not vice versa. It is uh, surfacing not only in theory, in our understanding, but also in things that are happening lately. One of them is uh, the pandemic, which is obviously linked with uh, the mistreatment of our environment. Another one, it is not by chance that at the same time in which we start to realize that uh, protecting our territories, our planet is important, that we start to realize that we didn't do it enough. We're also coping uh, phenomena that should have been forgotten in history, wars, forced migrations. 
So this is an issue that was totally forgotten before, but that now is becoming, how would I say, popular, climate and migration, climate and conflicts. And uh, today we will focus especially on uh, migrations because they are important everywhere, they are climate related, but we will have to start saying that whenever you hear about climate migra migration, you're hearing about something that does not exist. There is no climate induced migration because what climate is uh, causing is forced population movements and there is a big difference between uh, someone who migrates and someone who is forced out of his home we'll have to understand it uh, a little bit better to get to the rest of the of our analysis people tend to think that the poorer you are the more you are inclined to migrate but this is strictly not true. When you're too poor, you cannot migrate. You just uh, have to cope with urgencies so immediate that you cannot contemplate going somewhere else. Your day-to-day -day challenge is to have your bowl of rice and you don't even have those 20 cents that would allow you to pay someone to stay outside a truck bringing you to the next village. A migrant, instead, is someone who has already attained a certain level of income, a certain level of uh, possibility to plan for the future. When you start thinking about going somewhere else, it is because you want to make your life better and because you have more or less the means to do so. The uh, difference is not only in the causes, it is also and very much in the nature of the phenomenon. Because migrants, that is those who have at least a small part of free choice in their option to move somewhere else, generally can be beneficial to themselves, to their community and to the new community they're going to. Why? Uh, well, they are obviously beneficial to themselves because uh, if they do it well, they will attain a new level in quality of life. When they go to hosting communities, they bring their experience, they bring their income generation. In many cases, this is for instance, the case of Italy, they participate in rebalancing the demographic pyramid it is well known that in uh, richer countries, population is uh, shrinking, birth rate is falling very rapidly, and this is uh, something that poses a big problem for economic systems, for instance, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for paying retreats, to, uh, for uh, pensions to, uh, to retreated people. And of course, they are beneficial to their own <coughs> communities. Why? in a way that makes them beneficial also to the new hosting <coughs> communities. Let's take the case of Africa from the point of view of my country, Italy. Africa is just in front of Italy. And uh, if Africa explodes, becomes unstable, it is not only Africa's problem, it is also the problem of Italy, of the rest of Europe and of the rest of the world because its instability is contagious. It can be the birthplace of uh, new uh, forms of trafficking, terrorism, uh, illegal activities, and all the rest, besides the fact that uh, a continent which is unstable cannot be an area of economic cooperation. Once you might have thought uh, that you could go there to open your restaurant, but if it becomes totally insecure, you cannot do it uh, uh, anymore. So it is abso an absolute urgency for everyone to help Africa stay stable and progress in a fair way. But how do we do that? Generally, we do that through an instrument called development cooperation. Development cooperation is very good. It's uh, very helpful, but it is inherently inefficient. That is that if you have, uh, if you devote one million dollars, for instance, for a program in a certain African village through development cooperation, it means that only one part of it will actually arrive to the village. 
maybe 600,000, 700,000. The rest is used to organize the program, to pay the people who participate to it, to pay the banks for transferring money and all the rest. And uh, where is this money coming from? It comes from the taxes of uh, the people who live in richer countries. But what do migrants do, the free migrants? Well, they do development cooperation at no cost and in a much more efficient way. Because uh, they normally send back money home. And the money they send has no administrative cost and generally gets dollar by, do by dollar exactly where it is uh, most needed. So in this sense, when we talk about migrants, we talk about a rebalancing mechanism that is beneficial to everyone. Of course, it has to be managed, but it is potentially beneficial to everyone. This is not the case with climate change. Climate change does not cause migrants because uh, if an environmental event arrives that affects productivity, generally it can be absorbed by the same people who can start thinking about migrating. If you are rich enough to contemplate migrating, normally you're rich enough also to face a season of drought. Those who cannot face the season of drought are also those who cannot contemplate migrate. So what does it mean? It means that you have desperate people becoming even more desperate and you're forcing them out. And it makes a big, big difference because if the migrant, the real migrant, the one that has at least partly freely chosen to migrate can be beneficial to himself, to his community and to the new hosting community, the person who is forced to move is harming himself, his uh, original community and everyone else. Why? Not because he is particularly wicked, but because he is in desperation. And when you are in desperation, you become the prey and the tool of everything which is illegal and mean. If you have to go away and you don't have any money, you have no security, you will be recruited by traffickers if you're lucky, because otherwise you will be killed by traffickers. And this is what we have to fight against, not migration, which is in itself, let me stress it again, a very powerful and useful rebalancing system, but the tragedy of people being forced away from their home. So what part of climate change forces people at home? We have to understand that medias are often wrong when they talk about this. They, they link migration with the so-called extreme weather events like tornadoes or floods. These are of course destructive, but generally they are episodic, short-term phenomena. And what they do is that either they make people move for some time until they can go back, or they make people move for short distances, like you used to live in the bottom of the valley, the valley starts being more and more flooded. It doesn't mean that you go to Switzerland, it means that you move your home 100 meters higher. So what is instead really making people migrate is another kind of situation. It's the so-called slow onsets, large scale phenomena like desertification. And, uh, Above all, the fact that climate becomes uncertain, unpredictable. In a more energetic atmosphere, like the one which is characterized by the greenhouse effect that makes us store in our energy as much as the equivalent of uh, four, the explosion of 400,000 atom bombs per day, climate becomes violent and unpredictable. It's only normal. If you put more energy in a closed system, it, uh, it becomes a uh, frenzy, chaotic. But if climate is unpredictable, also nature becomes unpredictable because climate is the clockwork of nature. And if everything is unpredictable in nature, especially if you are in a poor country, also you cannot plan your life. You cannot organize your society. You cannot uh, decide when you're going to harvest or when you're going to plant your, uh, your seeds. This puts in motion less visible dynamics, but which are much more powerful. 
a slowly growing desertification is less visible than a tornado, but it's moving much more people than a tornado. I'll give you an example. I've also shown it on my first uh, intervention at the beginning of the social forum, showing you a, a map of the northern part of Africa, which is uh, made up mainly of deserts. The desert is not a generous ecosystem. Yet, there are some populations who have found a way of life which is compatible with the desert. Except that Today, we do not only have the deserts that have been deserts for thousands of years. We also have a somehow new phenomenon, an active area, which is the area of desertification. Now, if you put objectively on the plates of the scale, the generosity of the ecosystem in the desert and the generosity of the ecosystem in the area of desertification, the latter remains more generous. It is becoming harder and harder, but still you have more fruits, you have more yield, in the area of desertification and then in the middle of the Sahara. But there, in this area, you have climate that changes, nature that changes, and so you cannot organize your life, you cannot organize your production, you cannot organize the village. You see where it is located and you might uh, notice that this area coincides with the area of concentration of hunger and conflicts, the area of concentration of uh, terrorists, dynamics, the area of concentration of illegal trafficking of many sorts, weapons, drugs, uh, human beings, uh, and whatever you, you want, name it, you've got it, and see from where nine out of ten of those migrants that reached Europe and that basically destabilized European Union, European unity, although it was uh, somehow not necessary. Nine out of 10 of them come from there. The 10th comes from Bangladesh, which is uh, also suffering severe impacts of a distorted nature, especially with the salinization of its coasts due again to climate change. What happens? Environmental modifications cause the, well, the randomization of uh, ecosystem services of the fruits of nature, which already makes it impossible for you to organize any activity, not only rural activities like harvesting, but also urban management activities like uh, planning the distribution of water. If you don't have the slightest idea of when it will rain, you don't know how to organize uh, the distribution of uh, water. So on one side, we have climate change that is randomizing the behavior of nature and making it very difficult for human communities, especially in poor countries, to organize their production and lives. On the other side, you have contraction, loss or displacement of these services which are so essential for us. You know, we think about ourselves as a technological society, basically not really depending on nature because we think that we have substituted nature in everything, but it is strictly not true. It is not true in advanced countries and it is even more untrue in poorer country. We, rely, we have to rely on nature for productivity, but also for having clean water. Humid zones do that. Okay, let's stop here the, the video. Uh, was like a, a glance of the contribution that now uh, I'll share also into the chat. Uh, I don't know, uh, Pauline, uh, if uh, Ineza is uh, with us or is able to join. I don't know. Not yet. Okay, so let's go uh, then on the interactive part. Now we uh, we make the, the the first part that was more of a speaks and an intervention. Uh, now there is an interactive part that I will briefly briefly explain. So. Just give me one moment. Okay. So it will be a World Cafe session uh, with, uh, a, a, with the, the, the classical uh, Talanoa methodology that we are using uh, in, uh, in Climate Social Forum. Uh, so we will combine the two techniques. Actually, World Cafe is a technique that uh, engage people in small group that rotate on uh, on a different topic, it's each uh, uh, it will be organized in tables, 
So there, there will be three tables on this uh, session, one on climate and migration, one on climate and peace, and one on loss and damage. And for each of one of them, we will have a document, an open document that uh, with three questions. Where we are on the topic, on the problem, where do we want to go on the problem? So this is, we can say, state of art. This is like the uh, objective that we have. Where do we want to go? And the methodology, if we have like some ways, you know, to, to reach the, um, the, the goals that we want to achieve. So for each of the three, we can say topics and three tables, we will have uh, these, uh, uh, these documents. Now I share with you the documents in the chat. So now I will open for the first round uh, a Zoom room that uh, um, uh, will let you interact and discuss together about these three topics. Each room, uh, you can select the room in which you want to go. And there are the three titles. So migration and peace, uh, migration, uh, climate and migration, climate and peace and loss and damage. And uh, we will have for the first round, uh, 10 minutes of interaction where you can start discussing and so on. And then we will have another uh, round of interaction uh, in which we change environment. It will not be a more a Zoom, but I will show you. We will uh, go into a real virtual Agora. Let me, uh, let me show you. So we will go into the, uh, we can say the, the virtual reality. And uh, there is like a real virtual room where you can join. And as you can see, there are three tables, one on peace, one on loss and damage, and one on migration. And so you can enter this virtual room. I will give you the link on the second round. And you can gather on the tables, try to discuss. And you can discuss and interact with the other participants, compiling the, the common document. So let's start with the first round. Uh, I share with you the documents. So in this folder, you can find all of them. And now I'm opening the sessions so you can select i think that a message is appeared on, on your screen and you can select in which uh, uh, room you want to to go there is a zoom room okay perfect perfect i saw that some of you are just joining francesco is going on uh, client piece and so on and also you are all invited to join yeah
Mar, I will put you in a, in a uh, breakout room. Hello, Mar. You can you can enter into the breakout room. Okay. So it's climate and migration. I send you the invitation. I will be there also.
Okay, here we are back. So thank you. I, I hope that you have a fruitful discussion. Uh, I I saw that also the last speaker was joining, but I think that she's already experiencing a problem of connection. Anyway, let's now make the second round. As I said, uh, we want to like uh, uh, test this uh, this uh, this opportunity as a virtual agora. Of course, we are the virtual agora. And we want to experience virtual spaces. And now I share with you this, uh, this link to join the, the virtual session. So I share it into the chat. You will be jumped on, uh, on the room that I showed before. And you can gather, like you can move around the space and you can gather on, on your table and you can also interact with the other participants. So you can talk, you will be have a, an avatar and you can talk with the other guys uh, uh, among the topics that we are dealing. Of course, you can still compile the same documents as before, just you can interact there in the digital space. So let's see who's joining. So uh, I'm not seeing the link. Okay, just one moment. Okay. So Medico, we have we have to choose the same table as before, for example, climate. You can energy. change, you can change also, you can change also if you want. Uh, the idea is to have like a down and open space. You can also change the table. Right, okay. 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 I'm waiting to hear. I saw someone is joining. Maybe you can add, you, maybe you will, will enter like uh, not in the main hall, but you have to. Hello? 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 Oh, so I saw that. Yeah. Someone is joining. Francesco is joining. Hi, Francesco. I see. Hi. Uh, uh, I, I'm getting out from Zoom. Okay. Okay, no, no, you can just mute your microphone. Don't get, don't get out. Just mute your oh, microphone. Okay, right. Okay. Great. Hi, Francesco, I can, I can, uh, I can hear you. Oh, here you are. So, Gather you now. You can gather on uh, on uh, the table that you want to join. With the, you can move with the arrows, like with the um, no, no. You have not to move the the piece. <laughs> you think you can move uh, with the arrows, with the the the, the arrows of the, of the table. Okay. Okay, perfect. I see that people are moving. So join the table. I'm on the piece one. Which arrows do you use? You have to use the arrows of, uh, of the keyboard or eventually... Oh. Oh, yeah. the keyboard. Okay. Yeah, you can move into the space. You see, I'm moving. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I remember you from Bonn. Ah, great! <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> okay, now let's gather. Let's gather into the room. Uh, let's start discussing. So, I root. Yeah. Perfect. So I see that loss and damage is uh, already gathering. So guys. Yes, I was in loss and damage. Okay, you can discuss there. Let's start discussing. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. So I saw Francesco. Hi, Francesco. How are you? Francesco?
Yeah, yeah. So, Francesco, yeah, what, what you were talking about. Yeah, please, Francesco, continue. Hello? 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 Hi, who are you? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? Fine, fine. Good yes. duck. Who are you? Uh, Joseph Wambulo. Ah, perfect. You were, you, we were talking about migration, right? Yes, sure. Okay, okay. So let's continue talking about. I will mute myself in Zoom now. We are not getting you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? No, 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 I can get you. I'm getting you now. So we were talking about climate and migration, right? Y yes. Okay, so let's, let's speak the document. <laughs> For the others, have you been able to reach your table? I've seen, I've just seen, uh, I'm not sure if it is the correct document, but I've just seen uh, a screen displayed, but uh, I don't know what it is. Is this one? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but uh, let's maybe share here. Let's, let me share the documents here. Uh, Okay, can you see the document? <laughs> yeah, I've seen the document, but uh, on my side, I have a problem. My screen is small. I can't try. Uh... Ah, okay, okay. Okay. So let me see if the others, one moment. Huh? Okay, okay. Hi guys, how is going? Hello, hi, how is going? Are you been, you can talk to each other? Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Hi guys. You can interact with uh, Francesco if you want. <laughs> Yes, yes. I am here. I am I can I can provide feedback as well. Okay, that's nice. Okay, let, let's go back. So let's think about migration. I was saying we were talking about the problem of migration, for example, for youths that are uh, leaving their country and uh, uh, or like searching for like capitals for start activities and so on, right? Yes. Okay, so I'll share with you. No, no, was that? And so we were saying that, for example, support them with the, um, like, I don't know, um, grants or, uh, or, uh, support from NGO can prevent them to go uh, abroad. Yes. 
which could be also other other ways on uh, of uh... okay okay uh, be before maybe we get to support uh, there's an important there's an important factor that um, i left it out i think before maybe the support factor comes in i think youth should be empowered on a given let's say the education system should capture the importance of maybe green energy agriculture i think the entire africa curriculum is not good on such matters i think they should be empowered first after being empowered first then they should be trained after being trained then the capital factor may be may be considered into mm -hmm. Thank you. other suggestions in the meanwhile i'm jumping into the yeah perfect i think that you are uh, interacting i saw so i'm trying to one one moment joseph that i'm going to the guys here okay so hi guys can you hear me hi guys Hi. Yeah. Yeah. You you have to be uh, for, for Francesco. You have to speak very very near the microphone to be here. You can also write in your document, so you can interact among yourself. You can near yourself. Sorry. Repeat, please. I show alert, please. Yeah, yeah. Do, do don't don't run, uh, Francesco. Go near the place. Okay. So you can talk, guys, about peace. Hey, Julio, uh, Joseph. Let's return to us. Our table it was about migration. Okay, Joseph, let's be back. Okay. Okay. And how we can encourage, for example, the start, the mentoring you say, no? For example, one, one way can be the mentoring. Pardon? Mentoring them, mentoring the youths, for example, in, uh, in uh, like, uh, use like uh, um, training for opening business or like staying there in their country uh, okay for my uh, on a, anyway it is my opinion mm -hmm. but uh, it should just be a person centered interest it should not be something that it's being imposed to someone people should come up with their own ideas and they should be listened after being listened, then they're asked, what can we do maybe to build on your idea? Then when they respond to themselves, I think that is the best thing maybe we can have it because it is their, their, own, their own thinking and eventually they have their own solution. If listened to, there's going to be, I think, a more positive impact as opposed if someone imposes something on them. Okay. Yes. Okay. My my view on that is yeah. that we should look at what resources, what assets exist in the community. We are moving towards, say, as they say, green industries, and there's lots of opportunities in communities, but we need to identify them. And, you know, pilot some of these things, get the local people involved and seek to procure, mobilize resources for development of small industries right in these communities. Otherwise the people will leave. But even here in Antigua, we have a lot of for example, like tree trunks, things that normally people look at waste, 
we find that so much new little things can be made from these thrown away timber. So it requires using heavy chainsaws, providing, having our upholstery, work with a lot of these local people to begin to develop small businesses. But it's possible, but we have to look at what resources are available in the communities and in the villages. Hmm. Hello, Domenico. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I I left the, the, room. the other room because I didn't listen to anyone, and okay, I don't okay. know if they if they heard me. I okay. I tried with the chat, but no one answered me. I don't know if it's my problem. Or okay no no maybe maybe it was like a common problem so let's go oh. back to the to the normal room i will open again the the, the breakout room and uh, uh, we can uh, we can go and discuss into the breakout room so uh, for the people that were talking about migration let's go into the breakout room of climate and migration to discuss on our topics the same for the people that were dealing with peace, okay? Okay. So, okay. So, Ruth, if you want to go, okay.
Okay, here we are back. So, so sorry for the, the glitches. We tried uh, the virtual uh, session, but uh, I, I saw that someone uh, experienced and some probably microphone. So let's work on the, let's I finalize on the old style. So that the breakout mm -hmm. room. Uh, so we made two rounds of breakout room uh, on, uh, on, our, on our topics that were climate and migration, climate and peace and loss and damage. So now we're gonna conclude the event. So before closing, uh, I kindly ask to maybe one person that participate to each group to report a little bit the discussion that has been raised into these uh, two rounds of breakout rooms on the work affair. So maybe let's start with the peace and the climate and peace. I don't know if someone of the climate and peace uh, want to summarize a little bit the discussion that you had. In the second section, there was me and Joel. I don't know if Joel wants to summarize. Joel, do you want to summarize? Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Um, yes, okay, so uh, we are going to thank you, uh, Francesco and also Domenico. So where we are, we are in a we are in a world with a lot of crises that are linked to uh, uh, the way the government system, the governance system, the way that uh, uh, humans uh, manage their relationship with nature and how they manage also uh, uh, their relationship uh, with themselves. So these are uh, these situations. So those crises are mainly due to uh, the governance, the, 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 the governance systems. And uh, where do we want to go? We want to reach to a peaceful world where humans and environment fellowship. And uh, also, uh, we want also to reach a democratic international order to solve conflict. So um, how uh, do we get there? Uh, we, get there uh, we think that uh, to get there, it's important to build coalitions with a specific agenda targeting uh, young people and women because they are most affected by the ongoing crisis. And um, those coalitions uh, should have a specific goal. As I said, the first, because people cannot be engaged or committed if they don't very well understand, yes, uh, the problems and uh, why they need to be committed. And once they understand that very well, we can have um, a mass, a critical mass of uh, people that are going, yes, to take action. But uh, for people to take action, it is important to, to do it orderly with goals, so may, meaning that uh, why doing it, uh, having uh, an agenda, for instance, if um, as we are in climate social forum, if uh, there are many organizations that belong to platform, it's important that uh, they understand. Uh, they do understand in uh, specific areas, and then they define uh, specific goals in regard of uh, uh, in the in regard of the global uh, objective that we want to get to 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 arrive uh, to. And uh, yes, and. Once we do that uh, clearly and specifically, I think that it will be very easy to uh, to now uh, maybe organize kinds of uh, workshop, understanding, making people want to understand, and uh, also to engage them. We can also uh, organize uh, kinds of uh, yes consultation or survey to uh, increase. Uh, young people uh, voice or maybe civil society voice in regard of uh, uh, this problem. Uh, we have also talked about um, the reform of uh, the UN's rules and the particularly the UN Security Council. That is really important uh, since we have seen that uh, we need more inclusivity and more uh, democracy in the UN. And um, uh, we, uh, we think that uh, it's important that UN uh, move to another level. So uh, we think also that, um, yes, we're finding an innovative way to, uh, to make us listen. Uh, yes, uh, we have various platforms, but what we, we, we can say is that um, we are all aware that uh, crises are not good, but the way uh, even uh, young people are committed or engaged in uh, peace building uh, are not the same. As uh, we, we, we just discussed in this uh, chat, um, uh, for instance, when we have crisis in Africa, we can see that maybe young people from other continents are not too much interested. And uh, maybe because they, don't, they are not very well aware. 
And uh, also uh, when we have, for instance, crisis in Europe, we can have also uh, young people in Africa that think that also sometimes they are put aside. So uh, it is important to build this kind of solidarity among young people. And uh, we think that uh, this kind of uh, coalitions networking with specific agenda and uh, also a specific goal to reach uh, uh, the way we, we want to get there is really important. Then, uh, for instance, if we, we have this kind of a platform, it will be easier for young people then to make their voice heard through uh, position papers that uh, they are going to uh, champion in various um, local meeting, um, national meeting, uh, continental meeting, and also a global meeting. Um, yes, um, I think that that is a summary of uh, what we said. I, I don't know whether um, uh, Francesco wants to add something. Okay, congratulations, guys. I think that uh, your discussion was very interesting and uh, you came out with uh, like a really great points. And uh, thank you for summarizing that, Joel. So let's go on the second group that was on uh, uh, climate and migration. That was uh, by me, uh, Joseph and Charles. I don't know if Joseph and Charles want to a little bit to summarize the points of our discussion. Joseph Charles. No, I mean, uh, all things nice. Eh? I just want to, to congratulate you for your efforts. And uh, we are together in order to, <laughs> to support you and to, come on, this and to, to bring our small, our modest contribution in order to, to attend the SDGs. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Joseph, what do you want to summarize a little bit what we talked about? Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, I think to me it has been uh, a nice thing and uh, more so on the definition of migration. I think many people used to get it wrong. But uh, as per today's discussion, I've gotten that migration is something that is something voluntary. It is not a forced thing. And as Africa, we have a lot of resources untapped resources and youth should be encouraged to remain back in Africa and government should try to give the youth opportunities maybe by helping them with grants and other civil societies should also come in. And another factor that uh, most of the African countries we've noticed, they don't have an elaborate curriculum on matters on climate change. So we should encourage the African states maybe to adopt the matters on curriculum change and those youths who may be taken part on this, in this move and they've fallen out, they should be also be encouraged to come back and they should not be, they should not give, give up easily. And another factor that uh, on climate and migration, I think uh, youths should be encouraged to stay back at home and being encouraged to do something. And I think as, gov as African state, you should have some minimums. Maybe let's say before maybe you get to this age, you should stay back at home, maybe do something. Maybe after you've gotten maybe beyond that age, maybe a certain age, then you are able maybe to uh, give an opportunity maybe to, to move out maybe I think I think I think it'd be a nice thing maybe if you impost impost. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joseph. So let's go to the last one, lo loss and damage. I don't know if Pauline or other are here to summarize a bit. Um Paul and Ruth. Okay. Okay, then let me go ahead. So um, on our discussions, we talked about concerning where we are right now is that um, most people are actually concerned about um, loss and damage and especially people that are much affected that are feeling th these impacts. And they feel like they don't have uh, enough finance or enough resources 
to build back better when it comes to the impacts of uh, climate change. Example was given by Ruth, uh, that tsunamis, after tsunamis hit them, the government don't have enough finance to ensure them build back and go back to the previous situation they were in. So uh, we also talked about uh, the fact that there's no proper mechanisms of how to tackle loss and damage as it is a new thing to most of the people. And at this rate, things are moving very slow when it comes to its financing. Why? Because most people don't really understand it. So, and it has not been on discussion for quite some time. So the mechanism, proper mechanism for tackling it has not uh, yet been uh, mentioned or found. Where do we want to go? So as of now, there's, we are looking for like evidence-based systems. We should have like documentation showing like these hazards and this documentation should include uh, like local people sharing their own story. They should be the first hand to share these stories. And then uh, we should have new voices and new faces when it comes to uh, negotiations, because when these people go to negotiations and tell their own stories, it's better rather than our government or negotiators doing it on our behalf or on the um, people that are vulnerable. Uh, we also mentioned the issue of uh, making loss and damage an independent item during negotiations uh, because it has much bulk and um, its importance, it should just be discussed on its own and then we did mention uh, technology and uh, knowledge to help curb uh, the loss and damage. So how do we get there? So as at now, as I previously mentioned, uh, there's lack of knowledge on the issue of loss and damage. Most people don't understand it. So uh, we should ensure that we capacity build different stakeholders, when, whether it's youth, whether it's indigenous people, whether it's the CSO, we should ensure that we capacity build them properly and uh, help them know more about uh, the loss and damage. And also we should get more data and information concerning loss and damage. And this uh, data should be up to date. And then we should ensure that uh, we have more advocacy, especially uh, from the local people and those people that have been impacted very much uh, on this issue of loss and damage. And last but not least, ensuring that um, national delegations that are allowed into like mm, nego negotiations rooms are um, inclusive of indigenous people, are inclusive of youth, are inclusive of CSO, and also people that have been in that much impacted. Thank you. And maybe uh, Ruth and Paul, if you want to add anything that I've left out. I think it is it's okay. Okay, Pauline, thank you very much. Okay, Ruth, I don't know if you want to add uh, something. Okay. If not, I think that uh, we can conclude now the the, the open discussion. Uh, I, I'm very like pleased because uh, it's been really an intense uh, like session. We come out with uh, like very very deep and intense speech from starting from uh, like the the witness of uh, of Irina Yermolenko, the, the discourse of Francesco Postiglione, uh, the intervention of Charles, and uh, the 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 wonderful speech of uh, of uh, Joel. And also your your interaction has been quite amazing. I, I will speak frankly. We the, we at Climate Social Forum we did several times this Talanoa or breakout room session, and this one has been one of the most rich also of input and so on. Uh, so thank you all for uh, for having that. And uh, just to conclude that all these inputs we will summarize into a report paper that we will give back to the uh, Open Dialogue Foundation. Uh, as like part of the, the initiative. Uh, and also finally we will publish on the website of the Climate Social Forum that now I'll post. 
So to conclude, I want to give the finally the floor to uh, Paul Laundry of the of the Open Dialogue Foundation, and then in closure to Paulino Witty that has helped uh, me to to organize to uh, like design this event and finally to moderate. So Paul, for the floor to you. Okay, thank you very much, Domenico. I just wanted to to say thank you to Climate Social Forum for hosting this uh, open dialogue on climate change. And uh, I, I can say this dialogue was very insightful and rich with uh, so great outcomes also. So I was, I, I'm happy to participate this year again. And I just want to say also thank you to all the participants and see you, see you uh, for the next, next dialogue. And uh, let us stay in touch and connect that. Thank you very much, Dominico, and thank you to Climate Society Forum. Thank you, Paul. Pauline, to you. We, we cannot hear you, Pauline. I don't know if uh, Pauline, you can hear us and maybe. We cannot hear you. We, we cannot hear you. Okay. What about may... now? Yeah, now, yes, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, so thank you. So and so we lost you, Pauline. I think that uh, there is some problems of connection. I mean, Pauline, you can eventually write in the chat, and uh, I can uh, I can uh, speak for uh, state for you. So, in any case, I want to thank all uh, the staff of the Climate Social Forum, also the volunteers that let it possible, and uh, also the participants. So let's close now and uh, see you on uh, the next events. Just remember that on October, we have the Climate Social Forum, the event of Climate Social Forum from 18 to 22 of October. And also with, open, with the Friends of Open Dialogue Foundation, let's uh, see you on the next dialogue. Bye. Bye, of course. Thank you, Bye. Domenico. Thank you. For good, good night from my side. Bye. I Ruth, thank you. Good night. I good night, good night to all. Bye bye. Thank you for participating. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello to everyone. Bye.